As always, please take an opportunity to pause the video and attempt the question before moving on. It's probably worthwhile to note why they even call this an RC circuit in the first place, though it might be obvious. We have a resistor present in series with a capacitor, and then they have this switch that you'll sometimes see in questions. Now the fact that the switch is open and then is subsequently closed means that the charge on the capacitor will be increasing, and there are a few formulas that relate to that situation. Now we'll take these formulas one at a time, and it turns out actually that in part A, we can use this first formula. This little Greek letter tau right here is known as the time constant, which is exactly what part A is asking us to calculate. Now that's simply the product of the resistance and the capacitance, both of which of course are stated in the question. We have the resistance as being one mega ohm, more on that in just a moment, and then the capacitance C is five microfarad. Both of those given quantities are not in their standard unit. And so it would be a mistake if we simply and naively plugged in 1.00 mega ohms in for the resistance and then 5.00 microfarads for the capacitance. We need to convert these into standard units. Now, it turns out that mega is simply 10 to the positive sixth. So we can rewrite the quantity one mega ohm as follows. So we've basically just multiplied by 10 to the positive six. The microfarads also needs to be converted into a standard unit of farads. Micro is 10 to the negative six. So we'll replace the micro symbol with 10 to the minus six you could now pick up your calculator and multiply these two quantities. If you'll notice, the 10 to the minus 6 and the 10 to the positive 6 actually cancel, so you're just left with 1 times 5, and so you get 5 as your answer. And since this is a time constant, the unit needs to be a unit of time, and that in physics, of course, is seconds. So there is the correct answer to part A. For part B, it turns out we can use the following equation to calculate the maximum charge on the capacitor. In order to attain the maximum charge, the switch has to be closed for a very long period of time. And if we wait sufficiently long, then this equation can be used to calculate that maximum charge buildup that exists on the capacitor. So we're going to go ahead and plug in the capacitance, and then this symbol stands for the EMF, and that was given in the question. Sometimes we just call that voltage for simplicity, so we can plug in those known values. Now, once again, we'll notice that the capacitance was given in microfarads. If we wanted to convert that to a standard unit, we would have to replace the micro with 10 to the minus 6. Volts is already in a standard unit. And when you calculate that, you should get roughly 1.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And since we just calculated a charge, the unit would be in coulombs. And that is indeed the correct answer. It might be worth noting that if you had left your capacitance in terms of microfarads and calculated the maximum charge this way, your answer would have come out to be 150. And since you left it in micro terms, you would have gotten micro coulombs rather than coulombs. And that would have been an equivalently correct answer. Now on to the final part, which turns out to be the most challenging part, where we have to find the current in the resistor 10 seconds after the switch is closed. The challenge here is that the equations that we've discussed so far pertain to the capacitor. They don't relate directly to the resistor. But we will see that after using the capacitor equation here, we're going to be able to make a connection over to the resistor. So we're going to next move on to this equation. And what we'll do is calculate the charge on the capacitor after 10 seconds. Just take note that this value of Q turns out to be the maximum charge. And we've already calculated that in part B. We have T right here, which is the time. In this case, it'll be 10 seconds. E is just a function on your calculator. And then RC is the time constant. I find it helpful to actually replace RC with the time constant tau, which we calculated in part A as being five seconds. So we'll go ahead and plug in all the known values so we can calculate the charge on the capacitor after 10 seconds and you should obtain approximately 1.3 times 10 to the minus 4 coulombs, and that is the charge on the capacitor. Now we're not there yet. We need to find the current in the resistor ultimately. But first it turns out that we have to turn to this formula, which again relates to capacitors. This is a formula that was introduced probably earlier in the chapter. We have the charge on the capacitor, the capacitance, and the voltage. Now we just figured out the charge in the previous step. And of course, we also know the capacitance. So what we'd like to calculate next is the voltage that acts on the capacitor after these 10 seconds. So maybe it would be a good idea to isolate voltage first by dividing both sides of the equation by C. 
and then we'll plug in the charge that we just calculated as well as the capacitance that was stated in the question. Remember to convert microfarads into farads by multiplying by 10 to the minus 6. And after processing this on your calculator, you should get roughly 25.94 volts acting on the capacitor. So now maybe the question arises as to where this is going. Well, we know that the volts on the capacitor is 25.94 volts. We know that the overall EMF or voltage of the battery is 30 volts. What we want to realize is that the volts on the capacitor and the volts on the resistor must add up to the total volts supplied by the battery. In other words, VR plus VC equals the EMF. And if we subtracted VC from both sides of the equation, we could see that the voltage on the resistor is the EMF minus the voltage on the capacitor. Well, we just plug in all the known values now. We have 30 for the EMF and 25.94 for the voltage on the capacitor. And we thus get 4.06 volts for the potential difference or the voltage on the resistor. Now finally, we are set to find the current on the resistor because we know that current on a resistor is equal to the volts on the resistor divided by the resistance. So all we need to do is take the volts that we just obtained and divide it by the resistance, which again was one mega ohm. So that's one times 10 to the positive sixth ohms. And we obtain a current of 4.06 times 10 to the minus six amps. And that is indeed the correct answer. If you wanted to convert that into microamps, you could multiply by 10 to the positive 6, so that would make it 4.06 microamps. Either answer would be acceptable. So thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on your screen, and I will do my best to provide a video solution to it.